Hi everyone, I'm often asked about the Fourier transform and I'm out of my bike ride today and I thought I might try and find some examples of the Fourier transform in our everyday lives and give you some intuition on what it's used for. Because often when people learn about the Fourier transform, they're learning about a lot of equations and they're often asking, what are those equations for? What is the Fourier transform used for? So I've got one example of the Fourier transform for you right here. I'm out in the Australian bush and it's summer and we've got the sound of insects and cicadas in the bush. And you can't hear them very well at the moment because I've got a noise suppression filter on, a low pass filter. But I'm going to turn that filter off in the video processing software now and you'll be able to hear the cicada noise. And there you go, it's quite a loud noise, uh, very much annoying if you're going to be trying to listen to a video with that in the background. And so software, audio processing software, employs filtering. And the way that they design those filters is using the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform allows you to transfer from the time domain of a signal, maybe you've recorded the signal in the time domain like we're doing on this video, and then transfer it into the frequency domain. So that's the transform, transforming into the frequency domain. And in the frequency domain, you can see that my vocal cords can make signals up to about three kilohertz, but the cicadas can make much higher frequency sounds. So by seeing it in the frequency domain, you can separate out those two signals and you can design a filter which zeroes out the high frequency components and keeps the low frequency. Of course, some of the cicada noise is at low frequency too, and so you have to accept that, but you can get rid of a lot of the noise. And so I'm now going to turn the filter back on and you'll hear that the cicada noise is damped. And so that is from designing a filter using the Fourier transform to analyze the signal and understand its frequency components. So that's one use of the Fourier transform. Let's go and find some others. So here we have an example of where there are oscillations in a mechanical device, in this case, the shock absorbers of my bike. So as I ride over the rocks, the oscillations from the rocks on the shock absorbers need to be understood when designing shock absorbers uh, for their impact and response, but and also any resonances that happen. You don't want the shock absorbers falling apart as you're riding, in particular when you're going down bigger impacts such as here. And of course, it's a frequency response that we're interested in, and so we need the Fourier transform. So I've got another example of the use of the Fourier transform over my shoulder here. It's a cell tower in a mobile network. And in 4G and 5G, they use the Fourier transform to actually generate the signal. So it's not just analyzing signals like we had with the noise suppression uh, filter, but now it's actually using the Fourier transform to generate this signal that gets transmitted. Uh, and then you also use it in the receiver as well. And what happens is it's a thing called orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. And this means packets are subdivided into substreams, and each substream is sent on a different carrier, a different frequency. And all those frequencies are packed very closely together in a very clever technique called OFDM. And the actual way the signal is generated and that is achieved, those subcarriers, is by using the Fourier transform. So in fact, the inverse Fourier transform is used in the transmitter and the Fourier transform is used in the receiver. And for more details on all of this, uh, uh, mathematics of all of this, uh, you can check out the web page in the description below where there's a lot of videos listed under the category of OFDM. Let's go and find some other applications of the Fourier transform. And another important example of using the Fourier transform is in image processing. Now I tried to ride my bike around today and find a billboard that would have a big image on it that I could talk about the fact that that needs to be compressed, but I couldn't find any. But in any case, this video itself serves as an example. So whenever there's a high definition image or video, uh, it's often the case that you want to try to compress this. And you might be familiar with JPEG and MPEG, for example, as compression standards or standards for recording and saving images and videos. And the MPEG and JPEG use an, a version of the Fourier transform. Uh, it's uh, called a cos function transform or a cosine transform and various other relation related transforms. But in, it's really looking in the Fourier dimension, in the frequency dimension, 
in two dimensions this case, in two directions, because it's an image or a video. So there's a, a vertical and a horizontal. Uh, instead of just a single signal in time, you've now got a two dimensional signal. But the maths is in many ways a direct extension of the standard Fourier transform, and it's used for that compression. So uh, there's some videos on the channel that explain the two dimensional Fourier transform, and I'd encourage you to have a look at those uh, to look at how that operates for images. But that's another example of the use of the Fourier transform. So another example of the Fourier transform, you might be able to hear right now, birds in the bush. And when bushland is regrowing, it's very important to understand how the nature and the wildlife returns to that area of bushland. And so there are projects that have sensor networks with sensors in the forest, attached to trees, with microphones that are listening to the sounds. And then they process those sounds and they need to extract actual signals that re relate to wildlife. So there's all the sorts of sounds you can hear, noise and wind and all of those things. But if you want to extract out the particular sound of a bird or a particular frog, for example, then you need to look in the frequency domain. And again, you're using a Fourier transform. So you take the signals that you receive in the time domain, transfer with a Fourier transform to the frequency domain, and then you can match up those frequency characteristics with the frequency characteristics of the types of birds or frogs or whatever wildlife you're interested to be finding. And then you can be, uh, in wireless sensor networks, they transmit that back uh, through either relay network or maybe via satellite uh, to a central station that can be remotely monitoring the regrowth of that forest. So this is an example of analysis of signals using the Fourier transform. And I found one final example on my bike ride today, and it's right here in suburbia in these ducts under the ground. And this is where they have telephone lines. And these are not just connecting your telephones for fixed line telephones, but also connecting for digital subscriber line. So ADSL and VDSL. Often for many people, this is where broadband is delivered over these cable lines. And when the lines are being laid in the ground, and particularly in areas where there are new suburbs and new rollouts of houses, the telephone companies don't often know where all the houses are even gonna be built. So what they do is they put the cables there, but they put breaks off the cables at various locations to try to make it flexible so that they could connect up their network in a number of different ways uh, when people request connections to their houses. And these are called bridge taps. And the problem with that is that it causes spectral nulls. It causes reflections of the signal when they go down those twisted pair wires and then they, they go out along a, a bridge tap that maybe is not connected to a house and then bounce back. It interferes with the signal which is going to the house that really does have the termination at the end of the line. And in this case, you, have, you don't have a nice smooth frequency spectrum. That causes problems for ADSL and VDSL. So one thing to do is you want to try to understand this. You want to measure the channel, characterize the channel, and then you can optimize your ADSL and VDSL signals. And you do this, of course, you guessed it, using the Fourier transform. Again, it's in the frequency domain. This is where you get the particular frequencies that get canceled out by those bridge taps, and you want to find where they are, and you use the frequency domain analysis of the Fourier transform. So there we have a whole lot of examples of the Fourier transform in our daily lives, just uh, found on my bike ride today. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, it helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out all of the information in the description below where there are links to other videos and the link to a web page which has a fully categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.